Hey guys, so it's Veda, Vita, however the hell you want to say it. Um, day three, and you're going to hear some background noise right now, and probably some commentary, because Steven's playing a video game, and I'm finally getting around to getting this video up. And I mentioned yesterday, um, in yesterday's vlog, that I was going to be getting a package. Um, and I did. I got it. I got Breaking Dawn. I got Living Out Loud Activities to Fuel a Creative Life by Carrie Smith. Um, and then I also got her Finish This Book one. Unfortunately, I don't have the other Carrie Smith book because it's out in the car right now. And I really don't want to go into the car um, and deal with it at this current moment because we went to the storage unit today. And the car is full of stuff and... I have to go out there tomorrow and sort through stuff that's going to Goodwill and stuff that's going to stay here and stuff that's going to get sold. So the car is a wreck right now and I think I know exactly where the book is in the car but I really just don't want to go anywhere near that um, right now. So she is also the author of Wreck This Journal which I talked about yesterday. And I thought it was cool. I found one of the activities in here that um, seems really cool is um, in the section. And actually, hold on. I'll just bookmark this really quick with one of my receipts so I don't lose it so I can talk to you about the book. But it goes through different things, um, you know, such as... Um, Starting the book, connecting, letting go, dream work. Um, and so the section that I found is on connecting. And it starts out with, the section starts with, where does the section start? I just saw it before. Ah, connecting. So it starts here, and it says connecting. And then it gives you a little story, which I'm going to read. And it says, getting through the hard times. When my mother was dying of cancer, my journal became my outlet. My journal was someone I could tell anything to when it was hard talking to family and to others. It was my comfort. One day at the hospital, I reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. I was, an emo I was emotionally and physically drained. Even the tears had stopped. My body mirrored my heaviness. Head down, shallow breath, empty eyes. I wandered into a lounge designated for family members and stared at the small garden outside the window. As I turned, a dog-eared book sitting on the bookshelf caught my eye. It was Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl. I opened it up to, those, to these words. The best remedy for those who are afraid, lonely, or unhappy is to go outside, somewhere where they can be quiet, alone with the heavens, nature, and God. Because only then does one feel that all is as it should be, and that God wishes to see people happy amidst the simple beauty of nature. As long as this exists, and it certainly always will, I know that then there will always be comfort for every sorrow, whatever the circumstances may be, and I firmly believe that nature brings solace in all troubles. In that moment, I knew I could continue. The serendipitous reading of the words of a 14-year-old girl who lived in another time and another world inspired me. She lived in daily fear, but she communicated unimaginable strength and faith through her writing. When I left the hospital that night, I felt the wind on my face for the first time in weeks. I noticed a lone tree and stared at it. I got in a bus and looked out at the window, out the window transfixed by what I saw. The odd flower, trees by the roadside, the wide open sky. I felt like yelling, Ian, I understand. I see it. You are here too. I smiled with tears trickling down my face. When I read Anne's words, I knew that I was not alone, that this was not personal, and that the pain I, exper I was experiencing was universal. The message was that we are all connected through our experiences of grief and loss. In reading other people's diaries and journals, we see that the way through suffering is to just be present, aware, and find comfort in the simple things. By reading someone else's words, we feel connected to others, and by writing our own words, we connect with others. Anne Frank wrote to feel better, but her words helped me to feel better, too. 
This is the power of words, especially those that come from experience of intense pain. And this is why your journal can be a friend. And so the activity that I found that I thought I would just share with you guys um, for today's VEDA. Um, and I'm not going to do a lot of these um, on cam. I may do a couple here and there, but I don't just want this to be like the sole focus of VEDA. Um, but this one is called... Um, This is called Connections, um, and it's Magical Oracles. In British filmmaker Mike Lee's Career Girls, two friends play a game in which they ask, e they each ask a question about the future. Chanting to the spirit of Emily Bronte, they open Wuthering Heights and read from random passages. Thus, the oracle speaks and gives them the answer. So it says, choose a book or two. Maybe it's an old favorite or a library book or even the phone book. Close your eyes, ask the question, and open the book to see what you find. Let the oracle tell you the thing you need, you most need to hear. So let's see, what question? Huh, I gotta pick a question. Han, what question should I ask? Which question do you want? To, which Apple uh, questions? I don't know, it's any question. Um, well, since I'm currently reading between the lines, um, I'm kind of thinking something love related and I don't want to ask what the future holds because no one knows what the future holds so I'm thinking let's ask you know what here's one what am I supposed to feel about the relationship that Steven and I currently have Let's see what this oracle has to say. Let's read. I'll read you the passage. Wow. My jaw drops open. These mermaids who are man crazy in the fairy tale are hardcore feminists. What did he do to you? Carrie asks. Flirt with another girl? Call you fat, Marina suggests. Talk about his ex? Ondine says. And the others groan. We've been there, sister, Marina says. No, none of those things, I tell them. He dragged me here against my will. He didn't even ask me first. That's positively barbaric. Odin agrees. Marina nods. Good thing you managed to get away from him. Hearing those words, I feel an ache in my chest. After all this time I spent trying to be near Oliver, it hurts to have swung to the other extreme. The thing is, I say very softly, I sort of wish I hadn't. Marina sighs. Loves the title wage, she says. Because it sweeps you off your feet, I ask? No, because it sucks you under and you drown. But sometimes, I point out, it's the only thing that keeps you afloat. I realize that as angry as I am at Oliver for doing this to me, ripping me out of my home and my life and away from my mother, I've hurt him just as much by saying it to his face that I don't want to be here. After all, on the outside, I have jewels in my mother. Oliver has nobody but me. Very interesting. At first, at first, with the way this passage was going, it was kind of like the answer to that question was like, okay, so what are we, like, destined to break up? But looking at it further, especially the part that love is a tidal wave and that sometimes it's the only thing that keeps you afloat, I think this week, especially when I've been dealing with all of the panic attacks and everything, it's knowing that I have that one support system and that one thing that's always going to stay constant and that hasn't changed. That sort of helped me to realize that even though I may not feel like smiling right now, I still do have a reason to smile because, you know, even on the worst days when I'm feeling really cruddy and really horrible... I have someone that tell, that's telling me, no, you're beautiful, or that's telling me, you know, no, it's going to be A-OK, -okay. and someone that, you know, like this this whole entire thing, with the, as I mentioned before, with the storage unit, cleaning it out, I honestly would not have been able to do it without him, and it's not just the manpower, but sometimes it's that part of 
going in there and looking at all of the stuff that's in there, I have connections to it. I can remember the good times that Mitch and I had and when we were using that stuff and then it's like, <clears throat> oh, this old paper towel holder we had, you know, on our kitchen sink and it was the first thing, you know, we bought for the new house, you know, and that's why I need to keep it and... Steven will look at me and go, really, why the hell are we keeping this? It's going in the garbage pile. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what? I don't really need it. Or, okay, you know, it is. It's broken, you know. Let's just get rid of it. Let's not bring it in to clutter up, you know, the spaces that we have. And I think sometimes you do need that other person's input and that person's help because they can come in and they can help you get over getting rid of all of that sentimental stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this vlog for the day. And definitely, um, I do recommend, um, or and I'm starting to recommend, Carrie Smith's books a lot. They are really a lot of fun in that they give you something to interact with. The Wreck This Journal is absolutely, I mean, awesome the things that you can find in here and do and I know Steven and I were looking into the other one which is called finish this book it's a little that one is a little complicated which I'll probably share that with you guys um, sometime in the next few days um, maybe even tomorrow it's a really great book so I hope you guys have a good day and I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will talk to you later bye guys